Welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon, the Deacon of Real Estate. I am not Alex. I am Adam with you as always. But Alex, you are the man of the hour or half Alex. hour. The, the man of the half hour. We, yes, we like I'm say, the man so. of the next half hour, 20 minutes or so. It's about that. About <laughs> that. So, um, Alex, you know what? Thank you again for being here as always. I don't think I could talk to you for an hour. I, I would probably just want to jab my eyeballs out with a sharp Most sharp people object. can last like 15 minutes with me and that's about <laughs> it. And then they just want to run for the hills. Um, and so last time we spoke, um, yes. which was you know, a couple days ago, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, yeah. uh, we spoke about sheriff sales. That is correct. Now those are pre-foreclosed properties. Correct. And yes. then today, why don't we touch upon foreclosures and auctions? Right. Yeah, because like, they kind of both go hand in hand. Um, typically... You don't see a lot of auctions on properties that are owned by individuals. Not around here, at least. I think other parts of the country, auctions are a little more normal than they are here. Okay. But you don't typically have like auctions on properties that aren't owned by banks. Okay. So mo- the ones we're going to talk about today are properties that have already gone through the share of sale and the, the legal aspect of it, and the banks have foreclosed on them, and now the banks own the property, and now they're selling them and most of the times they're selling them through an agent but in many cases if they're not listed with an agent if they can be listed with an agent and auctioned at the same time okay so we'll talk about the differences and the different types of auctions that that you can uh, you can be involved with some are on site most of them today are online so one of the we're going to talk about the pros and cons, and when we did the pre foreclosures and the share of sales, you'll notice the only pro of the share of sale was Gosh. you can, you can make you can get some good deals. Okay, there was a lot of cons that came with that. So we didn't, I didn't suggest that uh, somebody new, even somebody who's experienced, jump into that because it's a whole different business model. It's a whole different different learning world. Curve. Yeah, completely. The foreclosures and auctions are way more friendly to your average investor or really anybody, okay? The pros of a foreclosure is, you know, this is after foreclosure auctions, are you can you can definitely get some good deals. And typically, nine times out of ten foreclosures need work. So you have to be able to, you have to be willing to do that work or hire people to do that work for you. So most of them need some work. Some of them it's just, very few you'll, you'll buy a foreclosure you just walk right into it and you can move in. Typically, it might be just some flooring and paint. Most of the time, it's a little bit more than that. Maybe a kitchen, flooring and paint. Sometimes it's it can get crazy. It can be structural. It can be roof. It can be furnace, plumbing. You know, it can get quite expensive. So the uh, gambit can run from just spit shining a place and getting it livable to totally you know rehab. hundreds of thousands of dollars of rehab. Wow. So the again the pros are you can make good money doing this. The pros are you can find these relatively easy. But remember something when you can find something easy, so can everybody else. Right. The pros are you'll get a good title when you buy these. Where the sheriff sale, you're not sure what you're getting. On these foreclosures, you'll typically get a good title. You'll have your attorney do the closing, and the attorney will issue a good title policy. So. If he misses something or something comes up six years down the road and then you sell the property or six months down the road, you'll have that insurance title, uh, that title insurance that will protect you. So I guess those are the pros. The cons are not nearly as many as the share of sale. Okay. Uh, the cons would be typically if you're up against uh, a cash buyer and you're doing mortgage, you're probably going to lose. Okay. Because the cash buyers for the bank are definitely more appealing than a mortgage buyer. Straight cash, baby. Yeah, the banks are no different. Actually, they're more prone to take cash than that, like an average seller. Oh, okay. Know? So, if you don't have your cash in line and you have to get a mortgage, it can be a stumbling block. Okay. On a, in a real high demand market like it is right now here, it's uh, there's a lot of competition. Just like in, in, even if it wasn't a foreclosure, there's a lot of competition. So you have to be able to act quickly, look at the house as soon as it comes on the market, and you don't have a whole lot of time to make decisions. Uh, the other con is if you're doing inspections, so let's say there's three offers on the table. One's cash, no inspections. Mm-hmm. Another bidder has put an offer, and it's uh, cash with inspections. And the third 
offer is a mortgage with inspections. The, the cash with no inspections could be $10,000 less, but the bank may take that over the third one, which was a mortgage with inspections. Okay. Okay, so that's what I mean by cash, no inspections. That means you walk through it and you do a quick analysis of what you think it needs, and you're not having a home inspector look at it, because chances are if you are going to do that, you're not going to be even looked at as a potential offer. So now, now why is that in a situation where, where cash is king? Just because they, they, it's guaranteed money on the spot. They don't they know that it's right there. Yeah, cash is your closing. Yep. Mortgage, there's there's a lot of things that can come up on mortgages. Uh, the bank can just get cold feet. The buyer can go ahead and things can happen right. between the time you sign the contract and close. You get You can go through divorce. You can... Somebody can hack your credit, right. and all of a sudden your credit score plummets. Uh, you can go and buy a, a major purchase, maybe a, a big SUV, and all of a sudden your debt-to-income ratio gets mm-hmm. thrown off and you don't get the loan. There's just more risk involved for the bank who's selling the property when there is a mortgage versus cash. Right. And then the next thing is the risk involved with inspections. If you're buying a cash as is, it's just less risk for the bank because if you're doing – cash with an inspection you have 10 days or 15 days to go in there and get the utilities turned on and check the sewer line and check the furnace and the roof and the bank's not going to really negotiate anyway right. so they're like you're buying it as is but you can do your inspection so again if there's more than one offer on the table and there usually is, is on, a, on a good property then you have to go in with cash and no inspections we just had one actually we had a client who made an offer on a three unit and I knew as soon as I saw it come to market it was going to sell and yeah I was right like in three days it sold so he put an offer in and the other offer and he put a very good offer in I think it was full price but it had a mortgage contingency and inspection the other offer was probably just as good or close it was cash no inspections and they took the other offer and that was a regular straight up sell. That wasn't even a foreclosure. That was just a, a person who was selling a three unit. Makes sense though. Yeah. It really does. So we could talk we talked about the pros and cons if we can discuss uh, the different types of auctions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So there's a uh, the HUD auctions. We should go on HUD.com and you'll, you'll pull that up. HUD auction is just it's a HUD is a um, it's a type of loan that that's insurable Mm -hmm. and what it means is the government i think this is what it means the government insures that loan it's hud hud uh, housing urban development Mm -hmm. but it's a government program the government insures the loan okay but all that means to you when you're buying one is it's typically the first 10 to 15 days or 20 days or something like that like on a fannie mae or a hud Typically, they're own, only open to owner occupants. Oh, okay. Okay. So now many investors buy these, and that's fraudulent, and it happens. But if they catch you, there's some high penalties. But these are open to owner occupants only. So typically, like in a good area with a good school district, mm-hmm. if a foreclosure comes up, and it doesn't need a whole lot of work. It's going to get gobbled up by someone who's actually going to live there. And they're going to be able to pay a lot more than you can because you have to buy it, pay closing costs. You have to fix it, right? pay the contractor. You have to hold it, pay your taxes and your interest on your mortgage payment. And then you have to sell it, pay commissions and taxes. And then you have to have a profit. So there's no way you can outbid an owner-occupant. Right, yeah. Right. It's just simple economics on that one. So HUD, you have those. You have Fannie Mae, which is um, also, I believe, it's not really a government insured loan, but they're Fannie and, and Freddie Mac, and it's just there's similar terms. <clears throat> but you can go onto their websites, and you can go on. Usually, all these properties are on the multi list, so whatever part of the country you're in, they're typically listed with an agent, and your agent will have access to them. Okay. Then you have the straight up banks that are just foreclosing on. The normal conventional loans are just they're called REOs, real estate owned, or they're corporate owned. They're just owned by banks. They're listed on the multi list. Some of them are just listed without any auctions at all. So, meaning they're just on there, just like 
Bob and Sally's house down the street, and then mm-hmm. two doors down might be a bank foreclosure. Okay. And they're all listed on the Malta dish, and you can go see them with your agent. Now, in this, like recently, probably the past 10 years, especially maybe the past three or four, a lot of these properties and banks are putting them on site, on auctions, okay? So very few do you have actual on-site auctions where you, like, you'll go to... I went to one recently. It was down at, um, it was down in Pittsburgh at a venue, and they were selling like 30 homes. It was a company. It's called Auction World USA. Okay. Yeah, Auction World USA. What they do is they handle these foreclosures for a bank. They had 30 on their list. They sent this list out to whoever they could send it out to and advertised it. We went and checked out all 30 homes. I think we ended up bidding on. A couple, and we didn't end up getting anything. But that was on site, like live. Right. Okay. Okay. Then they then you have some auctions that are literally at the house, which is very is even like is more rare. Right. You know, you'll actually be at the house. It's like some kind of a movie scene. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're really <laughs> bidding out in the front yard. That's, I mean, we did that. It was it was kind of neat, but I didn't get anything there. And then most of them today are online, so we'll talk about those. So HUDs, those are all online, Fannie Mae's, and some of these, like, you as a consumer can't go online and bid. You have to go through your agent. That's the way they're set up. I think in most of them, that's the way they're set up. But yes, yeah, some of them, like there's Auction.com, there's Fannie Mae, there's uh, HubZoo, there's probably more sites than, than, than I'm naming, but you typically, like... It'll say auction in seven days. Mm-hmm. Auction starts today. Auction ends in seven days. So it'll have initial opening bid ten thousand. So you'll bid ten thousand, and it'll say up at the top on some of these sites. It'll say reserve met yes, reserve met no. And if the reserve is met, that means now that it, the price is up high enough where it's going to sell. Gotcha. So many cases, I'll I'll be bidding, and. You can set it up so it's automatic bidding. So let's say the house is probably worth, let's say I think it's worth no more than seventy. So I'll start at ten. You could set it up on an automatic bidding process. So if somebody bids twelve, then you you get you bid thirteen. It, it sounds almost literally <clears throat> exactly like eBay. Is it? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yep. It's the same thing. So you could set it up automatically, automatic bidding. And then cap it at a certain number. Okay. And you'll get an email. Is that the way it is on eBay? Yeah, you, I believe You've just so. been outbid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it lets you know. And it, it, you can, it'll just incrementally uh, mm-hmm. buy the dollar. Just, you know, and I'm sure it might be different on here, mm-hmm. but it would just give you a $1, a dollar leg up on the next person mm-hmm. underneath you. Mm-hmm. And just every time somebody outbids you, but you just put a maximum on there that you'll Right. Pay. Yep. So that's the way it would work. You would get an email, or your agent would get an email, or both of you get an email. Depends. But... Um, I guess you can buy houses on eBay too, then, right? I would imagine so. I've never these I, days. I, maybe. I, don't, I don't do eBay, so I don't. I don't know how that works. I'm always usually just looking for wrestling tickets. I mean, um, um, no, I'm not. <laughs> but what's funny is some of these sites. I don't. I don't want to say which ones, but I know, f- pretty sure for a fact that some of them were. I don't know if they say it's straw bidding, but they were actually bidding against you mm-hmm. to get your bid up, yeah. which is really, in my opinion, un- unethical, unethical and yeah. not right. You have that on eBay, too. Yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could just tell. You could, you could tell that it wasn't you know, a person some bidding on it. And, and then oh, what would happen is the bid would go up so high and that, that straw bidder, that automatic bid would go up that it was generated from the auction company, and then you'd like back off. And then you'd notice that it can it comes back on the auction like two weeks later. Yeah, you know, yep. same thing yep. on eBay. Okay. Yep. I mean, that's about it. The auctions are fairly easy, but again, you still have to. And in either case, you still need to know the market. You really need to know on the auction foreclosure side. You need to know uh, the contractor side of things because if you're going to walk through it really quick, and you got to make a quick decision, so you either need to be very schooled in this area like I am or you literally need to go to every house with your contractor mm-hmm. and have them walk through it right then and there immediately make a decision and get your offer in because it's not going to last long if you don't. Now in comparing the two, sheriff sales versus what we talked about today, foreclosures and auctions, 
Um, and I know there's no real answer to this, but I'm going to ask, ask it anyway. Which do you prefer?